ladies and gentlemen, to Crusader Kings 2. This is the War of Conquest series. Is I the Golden Joe Oblivion? We're back with our man, Emperor Caesar the Great of New Valyria. And I just wanted to start off by taking a look at our amazing empire. At the uh, oh shit, I, yeah, yeah. It also includes the Summer Isles. I forgot about the Summer Isles, but uh, this quite quite the empire for our for young Emperor Caesar, his magnificence. Now, looking at this right from the get-go, I can say already we need to expand. We forgot to conquer Lorath. Lorath is still in the crosshairs now as far as the conquest goes. It seems Soth is going to be next in line as well. Who um, who are these people? It's the King, King Balavent the Careless of Umber, Umberi. Oh, they're Sarnori. Okay. Ooh. Maybe. Maybe we should focus on conquering the north of Essos. Hmm. That is an idea. Oh, God. There's a whole fucking mess of shit going on here. Right. So I think in Mother of Dragons, we conquered the east. And then we moved on to Slaver's Bay. And then we moved on to um, Sothor Sothorios? Is that what they're called? Sothorios. Soth or Rios. Or Soth or Orios. Somebody tell me how to fucking pronounce that, uh, that continent. And then once we conquered that and Slaver's Bay, did we take Noth? No, Noth is still Noth is still independent following their false gods. We will correct that shortly. Uh, we pushed all the way up to the Jade Gates, and then that is where the conquest uh, effectively ended. Because well, we upgraded to the newest version of CK2, and we couldn't carry over Danny's uh, Danny's legacy of conquest. But now, now we have returned. And I think we need to make sure we get generally everything. I'm not sure if we should do like a simultaneous conquest of North and South. So we're probably going to be avoiding the middle of Essos. I mean, because it's all Dothraki Sea. It's all just, um, it's plains. And it's generally not worth conquering because, well, I mean, the amount of men they have is small. The Dothraki wouldn't be that hard to actually conquer. It's just... These lands would devastate our armies trying to get into them because there's essentially nothing there. They're, they're just open plains. Let's see, Thace Dothrak is an actual castle, though. It, no, it's a small Dothraki fort. Oh, okay. So how about... Uh, you got little villages here. What is this? This is a shrine camp for a tiny slave camp. They're, um, they're creating sheep. Oh, okay. Right, however, if we look at the north of Essos, we actually have some castles and stuff. Morosh, uh, Sarnori, Omber, alright. Moro, uh, more, more, it seems to be more Dothraki. Until we get to the kingdom of Ibn, which actually has a, a castle. Yes, they actually have castles here in uh, Ib. Ib-os, the Ibn. The Ibanese. Cannot usually breed with other ethnicities, all right? And they follow the Ibanese gods. The gods of Ibn are, are, the gods of Ibn are the gods worshipped by the peoples of Ibn. Thanks. That's a great description. Great description there. And it seems to be more Dothraki. I wish there was a way you could separate this based off of culture. I think there is. Let's see. Governments, trade zones, direct vassals, opinions, dynasties, revolt risk. Um, culture, culture, a cultures. Okay. Here we go. Tall men, Umberi, Larathi. All right. Uh, this is all uh, okay. So this is all Dothraki. So we don't want to conquer them. We don't want to conquer them. We want to conquer the Ibanese. We also don't want to conquer the Jogos Nai because they're kind of just like the Dothraki. They ride big old zebras. Jogos Nai Moonsingers. All right. And then we got the Nughai, who seem to actually have castles, or they have one castle. No, they have a few. They have a few. What is this? Large N Nagai Fort. Oh, okay. And then we have the Island of the Thousand Islands, which used to be a place you could conquer, but no longer, no longer. They were, they, were, they have been since removed. And then Yt. Okay. So it seems that if we did go north, we would have to take Lorath. We'd have to take. Well, who are these people again? Soth. Let's just go back to here. All right. Lorath would have to be taken. Soth would have to be taken. Ombury would have to be taken. Ibn would have to be taken. And I think that's it as far as civilized societies go. The rest is all barbaric uh, 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 nomads who don't actually have any land. Yes. Something else we need to take into consideration is Caesar needs a new hairdo, and I think he needs more wives. He needs more wives. He needs to create a great 
a great brood, because he's since created his own divine bloodline, the bloodline of Caesarian the Great. And this is really going to create a schism within House Targaryen, because there's going to be those of House Targaryen who are Targaryens, and then there are going to be those who are Targaryen and of the blood of Caesar. That's a cool title, isn't that? The, the blood of Caesar, yes. Excellent. So now we, we can actually have a pure, a pure bloodline. And so we have our sister wife here, Empress Daenerys. Another sister wife, Empress Rey. Um, I don't think there are any others we can really marry. We might have to take... Um, hmm. Maybe one of our relatives has had children. Well, Lyanna is betrothed to our brother. Oh, she already has uh, cancer, so she's a no-go. Ah, that, yes, that makes sense. Right, and then Rhaenys has had Daenerys. Visenya had Rey and Marys. Marys with his dragon egg on the wall. The dragon on the wall. Um, and then Oris is still over here. He's had his own brood of children as well. I'm wondering if... Who do you guys think should be the uh, third potential wife? I don't want to get that too far out outside of the kind of Targaryen gene pool. Like, like I don't want to start inviting in random, you know, random uh, non-High Valyrians, or even just regular High Valyrians. They're not of the blood of the Targaryens. Let me know. And, and don't suggest anyone who's outside of the Targaryen pool or High Valyrian pool, because I don't want to hear any people saying, oh, you should marry XYZ from some house in the Stormlands. Like, no, we're not going to do that. we got to keep the bloodline pure. All right, but first things first, before we begin the conquest, we need to change the hairstyle, the, uh, the hairstyle of Caesar the Great. Um, I think we're going to keep the actual hair, but I think we will get rid of... Ah, there we go, clean-shaven. Clean sha he shaves the beard as after he becomes Caesar. It's all about appearances, after all. Now, ooh, what is this? Owes oh, a favor. Um, don't care about that. Council is discontent for one month, and will be until the first twelfth moon in two years. Okay, so it says discontented for one month, and will be until two years later. So that doesn't. That's kind of a. That's kind of a weird bug. Let's get the timer going. Have everything sync up and autosave apparently. And then we'll see if this changes. The council... Oh, your council has been discontented for two months and will be until the 12th... The first 12th moon of AD 28. This means that the council are more are now more likely to join factions potentially destabilizing the realm. Hmm. Maybe we shouldn't start invading stuff. Maybe we should wait. Maybe we should try to get the council content again before we move on in our conquest. Because I guess you could say this is kind of like, um, what is this, Caesar's uh, pr like probation period? It's like they, they want to see if he can actually hold on to the realm. He has quite the chin. He's quite the chin. The conjurer produced a rabbit from a hat, then made a handkerchief change color from brown to red, and then he simply vanished from the room, only to knock on the door and open it a, a few seconds later. We are in debt. We have taken a loan, and I believe we're holding a funeral. You must perform at my feast. Um, nothing but simple tricks. Let's let's try not to go bankrupt. It shouldn't be that hard. We have a we have an insane monthly balance. All the guests have arrived at Dragonstone, and now it's time to start the feasting. To start the feasting to celebrate the life of Emperor Aegon. Oh yes, we're still having we're still having the funeral for Aegon the Conqueror. Or as he's known in our series, uh, the Fat Scourge of Wrathtown. Your Imperial Majesty, I, I, <laughs> your Imperial Majesty, yes. Ah. I humbly ask that you intervene on my behalf against the aggression of Lord Oswald Pryor. Um, why? You're trying to kill Sir John Arryn, and you're currently being attacked, defending against Lord Oswald of Pebble and war against the tyranny of Paramount Jonos of the Vale. Whoa, why should we... Don't don't we hate you? Apparently he's trying... He's going to be deposed by Lord Oswald of House Pryor. That's a cool sigil. It's a little crescent moon and sun. I like that. I like that of House Pryor. Pryor? Pryor? Uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but I like it. And he's a legendary warrior. Nice. Ah, what do I care? What do I care? Sort, sort out your own wars. I made sure the beautiful Elena would be my dinner partner... And during the feast, I kept refilling both our glasses of fine arbor gold. Caesar, what are you doing? Oh, he's lustful. Aw, oh, shit. So he's not without his own vices. He's not without his own vices. So we might have to try to, um... Try to fix these things. If we can. 
Um, started, kept refilling both her glasses of fine arbor gold. My charm and my winning smile made it impossible for her to stay unresponsive. It didn't take long until she looked at me with more than interest in her eyes. That's really gross. <laughs> That's really gross, man. Um, let's see. She is the wife of Sir Elias of Windwyrm. Of House Scales. Castle of Windwyrm. And that is present in Dragonstone. All right. Um... I like to flirt, but I wouldn't do anything more than that. Uh, Mistress Elena. Emperor Caesar gives Mistress Elena a tour of the castle in his bedchamber especially. Why? She rides a fucking dragon. She rides Esavel. Mm. Now, this could be very, very bad. But her being a dragon rider might actually be what we need. Because if we... Um, if we... Um, visit the bedchamber that might make Mistress Elena fall in love with Caesar, and she rides a fucking dragon. So that's a great way of getting someone on our side who rides a dragon. Otherwise, she could be, uh, she could be a potential threat. We also need to get a coronation. There's a lot of things we still have to do. Uh, show me the dragons. Star Hunter is written by Maris, our half-brother on the wall. Snow is written by our sister-wife, Ray. We ride the Black Dread, of course. Who is lovers with Maraxes, who is ridden by Oris, our uncle. Mmm. I don't like that. Asaval is ridden by the random woman, which we might get the chance of, uh, well, making her like us. And then Raylax is ridden by Lord Amond, a son of House Baratheon. Mmm, I don't like this. I see, I see a potential dance of dragons happening in the future here between Baratheons and Targaryens. All right. So you know what? We are. We are we're going to uh we're gonna lay with Mistress Elena, and we're going to get her on our side. I'm gonna move my goddamn mic over here so I can get a little bit more centered. There we go. I will show I, I, Oh shit. I took Mistress Elena on a quick tour of the castle and we ended up in my bedchamber. I kissed her uh, come on, does it have to go in that much detail? Uh kissed her and Elena kissed me back and we ended up in the bed. A night to remember. Twenty five percent chance a Mistress Elena becomes pregnant with Emperor Caesar, the great child. Oh my god. So is she gonna fall in love with us? Or, cause that was kind of the point. 25% chance she becomes pregnant. What if she gives birth to another child of destiny? That's fucking crazy. Of course it would happen like this, wouldn't it? That's terrible. Tycan Zokan of his, uh, uses attendance, um, let's see. You are designated heir of Zokan. What the fuck? Oh, you're Tiroshi, okay. Let's see. He claims that Archon Bellico Adaris had one of his kinsmen murdered. Okay. Let's see. Archon Mermello was murdered on the orders of Vernos of... So here... Uh, who is he accusing? Tycan is accusing Archon Bellico the... Oh, well, I mean, he is dishonorable. Was beheaded on the order... Was beheaded on the order of Lord Paro of Isle of Birds. He claims that Archon Bellico uh, Adaris had one of his kinsmen murdered and demands that he is brought to justice for this outrageous crime. I mean, he is known as dishonorable, but... Oh, you know what? We can just look in here. Lord Grolio of Villabosh was drawn, hanged, and quartered on the order of... Okay. But he's not related. He's not related to Tycan. Yeah, I don't know if um, this is actually... Archon Bellico is clearly not guilty of these accusations. I don't see any evidence for it. Alright, so that makes him like us. Despite being in my palace as guests, the v violence has broken out between a group of Tullys and Bruins. The brawl shocked all those present and gravely disrespected my hospitality. This is unacceptable. Tullys and Bruins. Um, who, who's House Brune? Lord Fredder the Hunter of House Brune. They're clawmen, right? Of, yes, of House Dire Den. Well, of Dire Den, I should say. They're House Brune of Dire Den, and the Tullys rule the Riverlands. This is unacceptable. As the feast bega uh, begins, Lord John Sunglass presented a petition before the court. He says that crime and banditry in C Sweetport Sound is an increasing threat and that the local sheriffs cannot contain the problem. Um, he wants us to do something about it. We lose 60 gold. 
um, Lord Commander Ethan solves the problem. I'm not sure if you will be able to. I'm not sure you'll be able to. Um, it's gonna make us almost broke if we do this. Lord John must deal with his own problems. Yeah, mm. Let us not leave House Sunglass stranded. Let us let us send Lord Ethan to handle this. Oh shit! The scale of the banditry and crime as we pour sound was too much for Lord Commander Ethan to handle. Despite being granted many men and much gold, he could not capture the most prominent and cunning of the bandits and rogues. In one armed confrontation, Lord Commander Ethan and his men came off much worse. At least I tried. He has cancer. Oh, poor guy. Poor guy. At least I tried. Um, he is wounded, but he is not dead. Well, we did try. We did try. Lord Freeholder of Pinto Zocan. Oh, God. These goddamn Zocans. What does he want? He claims that Archon Belagodaris had one of his kinsmen murdered. No, he didn't. Stop falsely accusing your liege. Walda Frey has used her attendance of the feast in Dragonstone to present a petition. She claims that Larissa made an attempt on her life. Our friend Larissa... <laughs> no. Oh, no. Is she not our Master of Whispers anymore? No, she's been kicked out for... Oh, God, our court... Oh, right, because we, we just assumed the throne, so we need to rebuild our... We need to rebuild our um, positions for the Empire. She claims that Melissa made an attempt on her life and demands that she is brought to justice for her attempted murder. Well, Larissa was the Master of Whispers, and she is considered dishonorable, so she did attempt to murder somebody. I just don't know who. Larissa is clearly not guilty of these crimes. Lose 100 prestige. Granted redress. Why should we grant you redress? I care not for these frays. I care not. Lord Leo Soret has used his attendance at the feast and drags... God, these endless petitions. He claims that whilst he was detained by Lord Paramount Roland Rain, he was barbarically tortured and mutilated. Well, he is scarred. Hmm. He demands justice. Okay, so Lord, so Lord Paramount Roland the Cruel. Okay, so he is known for being cruel. Um, let's see. Lord Leo the Careless is Lord of Silverhill. His liege apparently kidnapped and tortured him. Um. Oh, this is a tough one because let's see. He is scarred, and he is craven, and he's arbitrary. So he has all the signs of actually having been tortured. But it's nothing too permanent other than the scar scarring shit. But if we attempt to arrest Lord Roland... Hmm... Can we afford to have our Lord Paramounts torturing their vassals? Hmm... Let's see... Um, 73% chance he is imprisoned. 27% chance of no effect and he dislikes us. Hmm. Granted redress for grievance. This could all... I don't know. Will this, end, will this end up in civil war? It's a little... It's a little early. I mean, I don't want to leave Lord Leo hanging. Yeah, I don't want to leave him hanging, but at the same time, it's, it's kind of like, well... Hmm. Okay. We'll... Pick the lesser of the two, even though it's kind of it's, it's it's kind of shit. You know, you're being tortured by your liege, and all your emperor does is just demand him pay you money. That's kind of a weak response. The only just response is to try to imprison the cruel Red Lion of the West. Oh, there we go. The men sent to Castamere to arrest Lord Paramount Roland Rain were unable to get past his guards. Lord Paramount Roland saw the futility in resisting, however, and surrendered himself to your custody. So I think what we'll do is we'll just put him... Oh, should we put him in house arrest? Or, no, no, let's actually keep him in the dungeon. We'll keep him in the actual dungeon, but we won't do anything else beside that. All right, Lord John spoke up and told everyone how great the food at my feast was. Oh, thank you, Lord John Sunglass. Uh, very glad. I was kind enough to say something nice about the food. Thank you. Let's see. Lord Paramount Oris of the Stormlands has declared Stormliner to Cal War for Lord Morgan's claim of Bransfort. All right. My prisoner, Lord Paramount Roland Rain, is complaining about his dark cell in the dungeon. Hmm. Maybe we should throw him in the Ouble. We'll lose some piety. Actually, you know what? We can't really afford to lose any more piety. Let let him rot. We'll let him rot. 
The funeral, amidst a throng of people, the body of the dead, freshly cleaned and prepared for the fires to come, is carried to the temple and proceeded up to the steps into the facade, where the body is laid in state so the family and friends of the dead can say their farewells. Place a teary kiss upon the forehead of the body, recollect about the day's past glories, or simply look upon the figure and weep. When each had had their turn to mourn, the bodies hoisted onto the pyre, a solemn pray, a solemn pray is, is told over it, and a lighting torch is presented to the Emperor Caesarian. As the gathered crowd quiets, the torch is put to the kindling, and the body of Emperor Aegon burns away. By the morn, the ashes are collected and interred within the temple, and so it is done. Emperor Aegon Ty Targaryen died comatose in bed. He was a man. All right, he was a man. That's a good start. He was a man and was unyielding in his devotion to their vows. Well, that's not true. As well as possessing immense strength, that is true. Emperor Aegon was one of the greatest warriors of his generation, his martial prowess being famed throughout the kingdom. Yes, famously, Aegon was known to be a dragon rider. Excellent. And we get piety, which we're going to swiftly lose. we we'll promote Marin to the Reach, revoke the castle of blah, blah, blah. All right. So, unfortunately, no conquest this time because we need to prove to the realm that we can actually, um, well, we can actually maintain the empire. So we're going to wait till this goes away, and then we will begin the, con the the conquests. But the ooh, are we um, we're trying to fabricate claims in River Run? Why? I have forgotten. I forgot. It's been a couple of days since I've done a recording for World Conquest. So I'm not sure what I'm really doing with that um, with the Imperial Justiciar. Ooh, I like that Imperial Justiciar. All right, now we must give out the most important of the titles, Archon. Um. We could, we probably should name Lord Paramount's as Archon, and the Bravosi Vargello, Archon of Bravos, has very good stewardship, even if he has gonorrhea and he is arbitrary. But he is, he is honorable. Honorable but arbitrary. Well, that's interesting. Second, after that, we've got Bellico, who is dishonorable. There's also Isengodo, but he, he is possessed. He's got a lot of good, good traits, though. Damn. Let's have Vargello. Archon Vargello of Bravos, and he shall oversee the Empire as our uh, as our Imperial Archon, Chief Advisor, in charge of both the defense of your possessions and the day-to-day -day administration. He will rule in your stead when you are away. Hmm. Nice. He will oversee the realm. Excellent. We have an Imperial Justiciar, Lord Monfred of the Whispers, and I am really impressed by his di diplomacy skill. Apparently, he's trying to fabricate claims in the Riverlands. I'm not really sure why. Curious. Um. All right. Um. Let's let let's stop doing that. Let's stop doing that. Should we perform statecraft? Reputation repaired. New. No. Um. Let's improve diplomatic relations. Who is generally our most powerful vassal? Would be Edmund Tully followed Edmund Tully followed by Marin Gardner. Let's see. He rules the Riverlands with eight thousand men. Really? That's it. Marin Gardner rules the Reach with 30,000 men, so he's much more important to get on our side. So let's go and improve relations in High Garden. And then we got our Chief General, Lord Commander Athan the Bold, who I believe is still training his children. And I think that's going to keep training the children even into their teens, I believe. Even into their teens. Now, did we actually fall in love with that one? No, we didn't. God damn it. We have been betrayed. All right, so we'll keep we'll keep training the children. Lord Treasurer, we have as Lord Alistair of Bramsfort. Hmm. Um. He has a uh, stewardship of sixteen. Does he have good traits? He's wrathful, cynical, brave, just. Uh, ah. I mean, we could name we could name more of our. We, I mean, we could make Bellico, but he's dishonorable. And Donifos Archon of Lys. I mean, we kind of need to give these positions to the, the greater lords of the realm, though, right? And then he's pissed off because uh, we removed him. Yeah, well, that sucks for you. Oversee construction in Old, Old Stone, Lord Treasurer Archon Donifos of Lys. And then our Master of Whispers, we could make Daria. She likes us now for some reason. Divine Marriage, State Diplomacy, Attraction to Strong... Valyrian Prestige, Promised Godhood, Motivated Ruler, Irresistible Blackfire. Oh, okay. So Duria hated Aegon the Conqueror, but she seems to love Caesar. So we will make Duria the Master of Whispers. What is she doing? Leading troops in God's grace. You are forbidden from command, and we will put you as the schemer 
in the capital. The capital of Dragonstone. All right. Um, court physician is going to be Donald, even though I would prefer somebody... Well, I mean, his, his, his learning skill is decent. Storm Singer will be... Uh, Nerys Votar. Yes. Now, do we want her to perform charity, or do we want her to proselytize? I feel like keeping proselytizing in the capital will keep the faith strong in the capital, which is what we need. Now... Our designated regent, I normally make my wife, but we have three wives. Well, we have two wives right now, but we will have three eventually. So I think maybe it should go to someone we absolutely trust. No, fuck that. Let's let's make our brother, our twin. Our twin will be our designated regent. Yes, because you can't go wrong with that. Now, court jester. Every emperor needs a good jester. Jacaris Waters is our rival. We will make him the court jester. The court tutor will be the person with the highest learning. The king's justice will be Robert, because apparently he's the only one capable of doing it, which is kind of weird. Archon, uh, uh, a warden of the south is Archon Bellico the Accursed. Um, let's actually make it Marin. Let's make it um, the Lord of uh, 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 the Reach. Um, warden of the west will be nobody, because apparently no one is able to do it. That's kind of stupid. Warden of the east is uh, 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 Lord Jonas of House Aaron. Warden of the north is Lord Paramount Brandon the Downcast. Warden of the West cannot be made, <laughs> cannot be made for a Lannister or anybody in the Westerlands. And we have our commanders. Ooh, we also have everybody in a position on the council. Discontent until... All right, so we're, 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 we'll, we'll work on that. We'll work on that. All right. Um, all this is good. Yes, we could vote. We could vote for some things. Um, but before we do that, let's make sure we got... All right, plots are being... Auto removed. Nice. And now we can request a coronation. I would like to have a little bit more money. Um, let's see. Let's uh, yeah, let's 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 ransom everybody. Ransom everybody. Apparently, one of the courtiers has been annoying my wife, Daenerys. And instead of asking me for help, she took the matter in her own hands and made sure the courtier would never annoy her again, or he'd know the consequences. What on earth was she thinking? She did the right thing. Well, I don't know who she's even talking about. Oh, Jesus. Rosalind Frey's eyes have been removed. That's scary. All right, she did the right thing. Seeks to rescue Lord Winton somebody. All right. Your Imperial Majesty, I ask that you intervene on my behalf against the aggression of Lord Paramount Oris Baratheon. So you are Lord of Bramsfort. And he is claiming... No, no, no. Uh, in Decal War for Lord Morgan's claim on Bramsfort. Yeah, what do I care? Yeah, Oris is going to do what Oris is going to want to do. Like, what what the hell? Yeah. Oh, nice. And we have plenty of money now. Let's see if we can't request a coronation. Enacting this decision was a result in a request of the High Septum for coronation ceremony held in the Great Seventh of the Faith. Does it matter that we're not really a part of the Faith of the Seven? Let's do it. I had expressed my wishes and desires for a coronation at the Temple of the Gods to Nerys. Uh, hopefully she will accept my request so I can begin inviting my lords to attend the coronation ceremony. Of course she will accept. So we had a funeral and now we have a coronation. To his most holy grace, Emperor Caesarion, first of his name, in the name of the gods, I, Nerys, would like to offer you my blessing to allow your coronation in the temple, great temple of the gods as King of the Andals, the Roinar, and the First Man, Lord of the Seven Kingdoms, protector of the realm under my guidance. Excellent. Send out the message to invite all the lords. All right, so we're holding another feast. Which means a whole new round of petitions and shit. Okay, I'm getting some weird sound effects. Lord Paramount Samuel the Westerlands has inherited Kingdom of the Westerlands and other titles. At age 37, your rival Lord Paramount Roland of the Westerlands died in the dungeons of Emperor Caesarion of New Valyria. Alright. So I guess that's the little sound effect for when somebody dies in the dungeons. Now, it's not like we neglected him or anything. We didn't murder him. He just just collapsed in the dungeons. And now, Lord Paramount Samwell is ruler of the West. We will attempt to sway him, because we need a strong ruler in the West. The best part about preparing a feast is deciding what foodstuff to serve. I will spend lavishly. That's that's really lavish, though. That's, that's really, really lavish. But you know what? Let's do it. Because we should be getting fuck tons of money. There we go. Oh, shit. I can barely keep up with the little little menus. Lord Paramount Mayor of the Reach has created the title High Lordship of the Rose Road. Good for them. Lords of the Realm have started arriving. Excellent. It's all going to be politics at the be all fucking shit. 
Damn it. This is not good. Caesar, your plan has failed. She did not fall in love with you. As you arrive at court, you see Sir Elias fix you with a steely gaze. At first, you think nothing of it, but soon you hear the talk of the court. Everyone knows that Elena is pregnant, and worse, everyone knows that you're the father. She has confessed to the entire affair. You have lost that loving feeling for your lover. She is not our lover, though. I suppose she had no choice. That was really stupid of her. Why, why, did, why did she say anything? I mean, you know, granted, her husband has one more intrigue than she does. But she doesn't love us, though. That's the thing. That treacherous whore, I suppose she had no choice. I just don't want to give her any reason to further hate us. And she should be honored, all right? She should be honored. Everyone should be honored. Although now he, she's going to unfaithful Letcher. And now our wives hate us. Oh, that's not good. That was a big fucking mistake. I thought Elena would fall in love with us. And then by extension, we could then... thats kind of, That would be our way of recruiting her. Because she rides a fucking dragon. All right. Some of my guests did not seem satisfied with the food. But I would never have thought one of them would have complained out loud. Sir Robert said a lot of nasty stuff about the food. And I couldn't help but, be, but feel irritated. Do not upset your emperor. The feasting has begun. Uh, and apparently it's good even though someone thinks it's shit. Hmm. Crowning of the king. In the name of the gods, I, Caesarion of the House Targaryen, the first of my name, promise, pledge, and guarantee in the sight of the gods that I'll be the protector and defender of the realm in all ways useful to it, however many, and so far as I'm supported by divine assistance according to my knowledge and ability. Today I was, I was crowned Emperor Caesarion and formally received the title of King of the Andals, the Warner, the First Man, Lord of the Seven Kingdoms, and protector, protector of the realm. This will strengthen my rule significantly. Not that we needed any more prestige, and, um... All right. Little duplicate messages, but we've now been coronated. Yes. We are now the rightful ruler of the Seven Kingdoms. Let us see if there's anything else we need to do. Look into the dragon dreams. Let's try that. Empress Daenerys spent many hours in her dragon dreams. After many metaphors and images, the outlines of a mysterious figure and a dragon circling overhead appears. The dragon opens its mouth and breathes fire, which illuminates the figure who is known, who is none other than Jacaris Cenarian. The signs all point that he's apparently plotting to kill the Emperor. <gasps> How dare you? Who would have expected our rival would attempt to kill the Emperor? He will know justice. He will know fire and blood. But that, ladies and gentlemen, will have to take place in the next episode. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe as always. Always, this has been Crusader Kings 2, the War of Conquest. I have been the Golden Joe Oblivion, and until next time, I will see you all later. Mm -hmm.